changed, you know? Mm. Cuz it was it was a strange thing. Do you feel like you've had more success going into the commentary space as opposed to the smash space? Uh yeah, when I first switched over, I completely lost like what one fourth of my audience when i stopped making smash videos there was a point where i said i'm done i'm just not going to do it anymore and um <clears throat> immediately completely dip every time there was smash news or smash dramas or smash related anything people were like omni can you talk about it can you talk about it and i didn't even respond to those people i just did not so initially huge drop probably would have killed the channel uh, but I was kind of like dedicated to just being able to talk about anything and everything that wasn't Smash related because I still enjoy talking with my audience. Just, you know, didn't want to have that energy of that specific being the topic anymore. So when I first did the Switch, it was a very, very, very strong dip in everything. And then after uploading, I started uploading every single day. I kept, you know, refusing to talk about Smash, talking about literally everything else. And I think people kind of got used to me. The pandemic happened. People kept hearing my voice. They were like, all right, I, I kind of like this guy for just talking shit. So <laughs> I got lucky there and um, it went back up. So yeah, initially making that pivot, huge drop. Um, if I didn't keep at it and keep uploading and keep going, I probably would have never got to where I am now. Because I've, I've noticed that you, <laughs> that the shift was quite lucrative for you don't you think because being a smash content creator especially back in the day was kind of like a, a dead zone i think the most successful one might be even hungry box just in oh, general not enough not, not hungry box alpha rat alpha, alpha the really most successful. Yeah, oh. alpha is the most successful person who did smash but he transferred out of it and alpha rat is is now you know the god he's the goat um <laughs> But it was lucrative, actually, if you were like the 1%. If you were Mango, if you were Hungrybox, if you're Alpha Rad, if you were Zero, um, you were at the top of the content creator game, yes, a lot of money to be made. And if you also were, you were a player back when esports was a thing and you were getting signed for different teams, the players were also making a lot of money. So there was a lot of money circulating in the Smash scene, but you had to be like the top, 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 top 1%. You know what I mean? That, that's fair because if, if you're playing a game and you're not and you're re replacing like fourth you're not getting anything in that money pot are you oh yeah no you travel two hours to go to a tournament just to get fifth place and upset by like a jigglypuff and ice climbers that's kind of why i retired from competitive smash i i didn't have the time or energy to keep competing against like you know 14 year olds 15 year olds that that would play this game 24 7 i realized very early that I was like, this is going to be something where I don't want to keep up with the little Timmies and Tommies. <laughs> <laughs> and so as from a competitor level. And then I went to content creation because I actually just enjoyed it. So it was more so me just doing the same thing, but just doing it without the Smash stuff. But yeah, it was pretty lucrative if you were the right person. Hungrybox now is probably the most uh, popular, sustaining in terms of time-wise. But... A lot of content creators that started with Smash, like Alpha Red and Pivoted Out, seems to have done pretty well as well, too. So, yeah. Is there a content that you feel like you're limited to now, considering you mo mainly you mainly do commentary? You're mainly on Twitter, kind of just speaking to people on Twitter. Is there a content that you're trying to branch out into? Because I know your, your goal, as most YouTubers, I imagine, is to get to that one million. I'm trying to hit that one milli. Is there something that I want to do on my, my like my main channel that I can't feel like I can't do? Or yeah, like that, like yeah. No, I love what I'm doing right now. I just want to make it better. I I want to fine tune it. I don't want to spread myself thin by doing too much different content. I just want to do what I do, but I want to be the best at it. I'm very um. What's the word? Uh what's the best way i can put it you know the whole punch thing one strong punch you do that a thousand times you fear that person whatever yeah the, I, 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 the bruce lee yeah, model yeah the bruce lee thing like right I, people have so many options on youtube that i don't want my channel to be an option filled with more options i want my channel to serve one purpose and one purpose only and i wanted to serve that purpose really fucking good um, and if I can make it better and keep improving on it, then I just want to make it better, make it improve on it. Obviously, though, I do want to hit one milli. <laughs> so if it's not about improving the content and maybe about altering the content, then I'll be up for that. But um, 
just doing what I'm doing, but doing it better always feels like what I want to do because I don't want to alienate my audience. If this was a restaurant and I was making ramen, I don't want to start making fried chicken. Um, I would just want to make better ramen. <laughs> so, so nothing that I can think of that I would want to uh, do with the channel. If anything, if I was to bring more content to the to channel, it would be additional. And in terms of that, I am, uh, funny enough, about to start introducing more interviews, kind of like the one where you and I are in right now, um, where I'm going to be talking with a lot of the people who are actually subjects of the videos and also other content creators, um, people in the, the journalism space and the gaming space. Um, I bring more conversation one-on-ones like this because I've done it in the past. People have enjoyed it. I like talking with people and I feel like it'd be a good platform to do it. So yeah, you're kind of doing exactly what it is that I plan on trying to implement more into the year. That's good. I'm happy I'm chasing your coattails. You see? <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't chasing my coattails. Now, tell me a little bit about you, actually. I heard that you have a TikTok. You have 200,000 followers. What do you do specifically? I know this is your interview, but no, I got just you. to kind of get to know you a little bit more. Yeah, because I'm just, I, at, at the current stance points, to, to be fair, I could have just been lying. You have no idea who <laughs> I am. <laughs> that, is, that is true. I don't really care too much, though. I'm a, much more of an energy person. It felt some good energy, so I just said, okay. That's valid. I appreciate that. I, I tell stories. Um, prepare to get a bit of a shock for your life here. Okay. Uh, I was a crip when I was younger. Oh, wow. Uh, I sold a variety of uh, illicit substances. I was a bit of a street pharmacist, one might say. Yeah, I understand that pharmacy life. <laughs> Brother said, yeah, I used to be a crip. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know a few CVSs in my, in my corners. <laughs> But I grew up in a rural Detroit, so a large part of what I've done, uh, I got kicked out because of what I did. Wow. And my mother, she, she gave me some money, and I gave it right back to her. I gave her all my drug money, and I said, all right, I'm gone. Now, this is where the story gets really interesting. I was homeless and married a 90-year-old woman. Um, <laughs> huh? Huh? <Yeah. laughs> Wait a minute, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. You say they, a... <laughs> A 90-year-old woman? Yeah, yeah. I married a 90-year-old woman. Wow. <laughs> this is incredible. Wait, now I need to interview you, bro. We're about to swift this on the, on the coattails. Okay, so grew up in the crit, married a 90-year-old woman. Yeah. How was that? Um, it was it, it was two months, right? This is this is yeah. why people love me on TikTok. It was two months, and I was homeless, and I was visiting hospitals. I was taking the pills to sell to people but from the old people. I was taking the food and, the, and stuff like that and using the showers. Yeah to bathe myself so I could get a job because I needed to live. Yes. And then I met this old woman, we'll refer to her as Margaret, and she said, my grandchildren are torturous and evil towards me. Would you like to live with me? And I said, you got a house? She said, yep. I said, well, <laughs> don't mind if I do. So you needed a house and she needed some company. And yeah. <laughs> and, That's awesome. And, and then uh, she passed uh, two months into our, um, our marriage. We got married, went on to municipal courts and got married. And wow. everybody was so curious about that on test. Stuff. That was like my first big blow up video on TikTok. Um, and after that, I explained how I lived in Amish village because I went, I went homeless again after that because uh, mm. that happened. And I explained Amish village, how I played D&D &D with a bunch of gangbangers when I was younger because I wanted them to stop fighting. I've done a few things in my life that people on TikTok find horrifically interesting. Um, and I, I have a big silly afro. If you see the the Discord picture, that's my hair. That's just two swans. Yeah, well, I just saw it. I just saw you, but also my chats and here like, oh, that's the afro guy on TikTok. <laughs> Apparently, that's your um, that's your motto. Yeah, You're the afro guy on TikTok. <laughs> and and now people they're calling me um a swirler. Uh, a swirler. Yeah, simply because I'm I'm married to a white woman. That's what they're referring to me oh. as. Oh, yeah, I've dated I've dated a white girl before, and I remember I remember those days. If you ever want to ask about that, but <laughs> good times, I guess. But in general, um, I was I was streaming one day, and one of my one of my chat said, "Are you ever going to interview Bald Saitama?" And I said, "I'm sorry." It's like, yeah, yeah, Bald Saitama. I'm like, Saitama's already bald. Why are you calling him Bald Saitama? And then they <laughs> then and then a, a 16 year old in chat was like, they meant Black Saitama, the, the legend, the one, the only, the coffee drinking hero. And I'm like, you talking about Omni? And I was like, I did not know that was my nickname in, in different parts of the universe. Okay, I'm glad to hear it though. TikTok loves you. Oh my god, TikTok. There, there, there was a. It, there's a there's like a reddit ama thing where it's just yeah. your voice but ai'd over like cooking videos and it's a it's like a whole thing it's... wait 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 pause 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 okay. there's a there's a 
I exist on 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 TikTok. You and ex- there's a Reddit. Yeah, you what? exist on a- you exist on on AI TikTok. That's that a bit a big part of why I reached out to you was like I know this voice. <laughs> Hold up, dude! You're you're flipping my whole world upside down. Like number one. <laughs> We're going to have to get into that. You're going to have, you're going to, have to link me up and let me know what this yeah. is all about. We're going to check that into it. But number two, that's pretty cool. I've, um, I dabbled on TikTok for a little bit. I was uploading some shorts on there. I might come back to it, but I, uh, I got kind of shorted out. You, I don't know if you've seen my content recently or any of the most recent stuff, but I'm much more of a slow paced, low dopamine. I'm not like the shorts where you, you know, you keep doom scrolling, keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I'm much more of a laid back, slow guy, which, I feel like competes with the concept of what shorts are for, right? No, shorts no, are supposed no. to like you're you're see you have the issue that I had oh. initially. My oh. wife is big on TikTok. The Satang Juseo, that is her name on there. It means I like candy in Korean. And she is huge. Yeah. Be- she started doing dance videos, you know, cuz she has a great body, dance videos. I yeah. did a 4-minute story. Slow paced, super simple. And P- I, I got like four million views, and I was like, "Cool!" And then I, I made a, I made five thousand dollars from that, like five thousand off that four minute, that five million views. I was like, "Super cool!" What? Yeah, TikTok pays well now. It is insane. I have no issue talking about like the money you make either. You could yeah, you could yeah, have yeah. a second string of of income because I I've seen YouTube income, and I'm like, "Eh, he's probably making money, but not like TikTok money because TikTok money is crazy right now." All right, bro. Well, whatever you're selling, I'm buying. Okay, just let you know right now, you are an excellent merchant. You have still passed over your trades from the days, but uh, I might have to look into that. I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I tried it for a little bit. It didn't really do too much, but we we will rap about it. You can you get me into the TikTok game. Well, uh, that'll be the payment. I will I will do my best to make sure that the world <laughs> knows of Land Omni. I will make sure. <laughs> <laughs> thanks man well i know you were interviewing me my bad i flipped i flipped the script on you was there what 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 ask ask me anything i got you covered <laughs> I, have, I have i have a few I have a few things to ask you because you've you may not know this um we have interacted once before <laughs> have we did you well, come to one of the cons one of the tournaments uh it was <laughs> It was very small and light. I believe we played Smash Bros. Melee against each other, and I walked away, and I shook your hand. I think that was the only interaction we've ever had, ever. <laughs> we, <laughs> you beat my ass, uh, to be quite fair. <laughs> I, was it Melee or Brawl? What, what, what it, it, did we it was, I believe it was a Melee, because I, I had brought a special yeah, orange yeah. controller, and it was, it was a bit messed up, and you beat the hell out of me. And I, I, it was probably unmemorable as hell. It was probably horribly unmemorable, but you uh, just decimated me. And after that, I was like, I can't believe I got whooped by this bald nigga. I was so, <laughs> I was so angry. <laughs> <laughs> where was this was this dmv was this new york I, I, I sometimes used to go up to to the detroit too as well i don't remember do you remember where that tournament was bunny jazz like it was it, i was young i was younger i was like i'm 27 now i was i was oh my god it was probably like eight it nine years baby. ago yeah, yeah, yeah it was like yeah. It, it was a minute ago because my you, bad man i was just i just beat you so that you can get stronger <laughs> so that you can so that you could rise rise you know and look at where you're at now man that beating turns you into this huge tiktoker man I, you're, you're welcome I'll, I'll take all the royalties now i'll take all the royalties. <laughs> i got you i got you i got you i'll give it to I'll my master omni <laughs> <laughs> I, I it's it, yeah. it's a strange dichotomy here because the the reason I I really want I, I'm looking for more black content creators specifically because I feel as though we have the toughest growth pattern ever. Oh, hell yeah! It, um, it, I think about that all the time, dude. Tell me tell me what you were about to say before I go. Yeah, it, I, I was I was curious on your interest in this because I've interviewed like Cloudy McDoom and Cloudy. Oh, my boy, yeah, Cloudy should be a million subscribers, right? Cloudy is is so fucking entertaining and he's the only person doing what he does i've seen actually other people try to copy him but but cloudy mcdoom is so goddamn hilarious like yes this man should be spiking out of the ass right like his content is so hard to replicate it's very very easy that you can tell that he puts a lot of time and energy into it like the freaking the Sephiroth beats and all the Final Fantasy role plays that he does to make it seem exactly like how it is. I I love him as a content creator. I discovered him way early, and I do feel like Cloudy is definitely not where he should be for real, for real. He has what I've described as the when you go too far extreme on a side. Like if you're too far right, if you're too far left, those work really good, but not if you're an anime nerd. 
if you are an anime nerd, you need to find the medium of mixing two because right. people want the coolness factor. Anime by itself is not cool. But little Uzi Vert talks about Majin Buu. Now Dragon Ball Z is really cool again. Right. And, and we have people like RDC who are huge in the space. Huge. Yeah. They're the kings of kings of basically anime type content. True. They are the master, truly the pivotal kings. But they're the kings because they add an aspect that people think black people have to do, which is the hood. That is why they're so popular. Oh shit! <laughs> you, you you're hitting some shit that I've been that I always think that I talk about from time to time. And if you want some real shit, you made you want me to you want some real shit? Yeah, it was a real shit. Go ahead. All right. So yes, uh, being black as a YouTuber is so fucking industry, right? Because in my earlier days when I was making Smash content, I talked about this a little bit, but I used to do a bit of uh, skits. Uh, one of my um, one of my heroes of YouTube back in the day was Sky Williams, funny ass nigga who did vlogs and he also um, did a bit of skits or whatever. And then I started seeing all these people doing skits and I was like, yeah, I like this whole space. You got Caleb City, you had Long Beach Griffin. Like, you know, when it comes to skits and comedy, a lot of black people like, you know, at the top, Mighty Keith. But then I started finding myself in a place where I was like, wait a minute, is that the only place that where black people grow on the youtube space is being fucking funny right like being that guy and usually taking like remnants of being black as a part of the of the comedy right like hey it's a, i'm a black guy and i'm talking about anime but also i'm black so i'm gonna enter my my race into it to kind of be a hee hee haw haw as the audience and i started realizing this this trend in this bucket where i was like uh, if i grow on youtube because i become the hee hee haw haw funny black guy it will probably get me views. It will probably help me to grow. But then I'm boxed into this place that I don't want to be. That's kind of how I felt. So, so black people can. Here's a extreme uh, case, but King Botch, right? Oh he, God. Yeah, he took that. He took being black and comedy and skits to the to the 15th million degree and said, "I'm a triple quadruple down," right on that shit. He, and he so, really did. yeah, he he did that. So. The way that black people move forward sometimes in content creation or the YouTube space or social media is by literally just focusing on being black sometimes, right? And that sucks that that's what your selling point sometimes has to be is it's that. So now when I made the switch from like Smash, I never really harped on that, but like to let's say, let's, what do you want to call what I'm doing? Commentary. Not a lot of black people in the commentary space. But do you call me a news person? Not a news, lot of news people in the news uh, space. Um, majority of commentary people are white men. That's the, that's the, the echelon. Those are usually at the top. Um, you'll get some of the exceptions like, you know, I would say uh, Abba and Preach. Kind of uh, only the one. D'Angelo Wallace too, I believe. And D'Angelo Wallace is also mm -hmm. a king, right? But if you take that right you got jarvis johnson you got a couple outliers but in terms of the whole scope of the big things of the internet space and the news space you know philip defranco all the big guys who do news is there's not a lot of black people in in that area because what and, what, what what i feel the bigger issue here right you got you got a, a larger issue here people this is this is going to sound really crazy but hear me out it's something i've thought about too deeply i'm listening syriacs i love syriacs Siri X might be one of my favorite gaming content creators. Why has he not hit a million subscribers yet? You're probably wondering why. When his contemporary rhyme style hit a million. Rhyme style is, to me, in my opinion, significantly less entertaining than Siri X. Siri X has more energy, he's higher energy, but he's black. But he's more approachable because he's lighter skinned. Then there's Donald Doya, who the, he did a face reveal and he lost 20,000 subscribers. Reason being, Holy shit. yeah, he did a face reveal. Donald, well, the, the first time he did a face reveal, I, I went, it was like four years ago. First time he did a face reveal, they thought he was a fat guy and they liked his voice but didn't like him. Being a faceless YouTuber works a lot better. Jarvis Johnson, who are his contemporaries? Uh, Drew Gooden, uh, mm -hmm. Dan Danny Gonzalez, uh, Curtis mm -hmm. Connor. His contemporaries mm -hmm. are white passing, because Danny Gonzalez, I believe, is uh, some way Spanish and some way Mexican. Yes. White passing commentary people. You need, in order to grow as a black people, D'Angelo Wallace, the reason he's successful is because he panders to 
uh, a demographic where he fits in the LGBTQ. He fits in that, which is great. I'm yes. happy about that. You know, that and women, and he yeah, has that and women. Yeah, right? that he fits in in that camp. He they pander to that, but being just black, because a white guy can just see by being just white, but being just black, you will get actively nowhere. It is disgusting. It's crazy to me. So. Number one, I don't watch a lot of Syriacs, but mm -hmm. I've watched Rhyme Style. I like his shit. That's my boy. Mm -hmm. So I can't compare the two because I haven't seen Syriacs. Uh, I don't know. I know that Rhyme Style was uploading like multiple times every day. So I can't, I don't know the journey and the difference between those two. But I like Rhyme Style a lot. Uh, I don't know Syriacs because I don't watch enough of his content. But it's, it's, it's interesting, right? You have outliers here that don't define what's happening, right? Like some of the people who are Enigma black space uh you got mkbhd probably one of the most successful tech guys out there are, you know outside of like linus tech tips right mm -hmm. but then usually that's it you get you get one and you're done you got you know our boy Corey x kenshin right who is literally the king of of, of video game youtube gameplay like if this man wanted to take youtube serious and go crazy this man would have been at a, a billion subscribers right so you got him as well so you got the outliers that kind of say, oh, but you have these guys. But in terms of like, you even got like in the streaming space, you got like Kai. And Kai obviously clearly is extreme, you know, extreme towards black, the black. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> right? So the whole point is, is MKB, he, he didn't do that. He's, he's the outlier. And Corey didn't really do that. He's just, you know, he's just that, that, that nigga. He's just been doing it for a while and he does it good. You got Afro Senju as well. Um... I agree with you, though, that the problem is that I do think, like, for example, me, if I was not black, maybe if I was light skinned, maybe if I was white, I do think I'd have a, a severe uptick <laughs> in subscribers. <laughs> and uh, I, I do think I would have much more of a bigger audience. Um, but I don't think it boils down to me just being black. I think you would get a buff if you're not, if that makes more sense. Just like how it is for, like, you know, women in the gaming space. In the content creation space you can take a woman the same aspects of some of these men out here you see in twitch streaming and unfortunately when it comes to anime gaming nerd spaces that are dominated by male cultures uh they just get whooped on they get discriminated <laughs> against they get they get the shit end of the stick just for existing um uh, so I, I can't even i can't even think of a, a big black uh women content creator who is on youtube that I, I can't I I can't think of one actually when I think about it. I, um, I think of Jazzy. Jazzy is the one that I could think of in terms of a black woman who's doing in the gaming space. But there's not a lot. Uh, I agree with you on that. Um, Twitch. Yeah, you're blaming Twitch. Somebody in the chat just said they're blaming Twitch. Twitch is a dominated space of usually probably white boys slash men. Yeah, and uh, then the there's color some, here is and then proportionate. Some, and then some girls who are out here just uh showing their bodies. And I'm not gonna lie to you here. This is gonna sound seemingly insane. I enjoy the fact that they're exploiting that. I enjoy that aspect. Because I don't have a problem with it either. Is it, if it works, it works. I can't I can't yeah. fault genius ever. I never will. I mean I mean, yeah. <laughs> when you where you came from, right? And I, I came from broke. So we understand, we, we understand hustle mentality. We understand survivability. We understand you get what you need to get. If you need to steal from these niggas or you need to steal from Twitch, if you need a, that's fine. That's whatever. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to disrupt your cash flow. That's is what I'm saying. I never mess with somebody's wallet. Um, but yeah, man, when it comes to black people in black space and myself being as black, I've thought about it. Right. Um, Thinking about it doesn't do much, though. It doesn't change it. Like, would I be at a million subscribers if I was white? Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe I can make better fucking content. But I guess that the question is, like, at the end of the day, is, like, what do you do with that information? If that is factual, if it is actually based on statistics that we have a hard time rising in the content creation space just because of, you know, how we look. Um... But then we also have, you know, what happens is, is if you talk about that and then people will point to the Corey X Kenshins and the, the KB Lames, right? We have in the Kai Sanats, we, we have people who are black who are at the top of the top. Yeah, so that, that's, that's, that's always, and that, that's, that's a, that's kind of like a, that's a fallacy. Yeah, it's a fallacy, but people will use that, right? Like they won't discuss it. They'll be like, well, what about X, Y, Z? And then that's it. And that's the, that's the X, X, 
that is the exception the and rule. not the rule for sure um but the rule is exactly as you say man um growing in the space and being black was so interesting too because when i was making content and i started switching to the commentary space i did notice a uptick and like just racist comments like people would be <laughs> like hey hey blackie what are you doing here like i got called keys I, I get racist names all the time and it doesn't hurt me anymore i just I, I would hope that it's more creative that i can laugh at it but i realized when i was exiting the space of what you know black entertainers might do and going more so into a space that has less people like me um i did start encountering strangers and an outside user base of people who just didn't fuck with black people and it was very apparent so yeah it's 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 such a i remember my one of my most successful video back when before i got banned on youtube for the first time i used to yeah. run a channel called dog poison and all i would do is talk about one piece and I got into this big beef with King of Lightning. Holy crap. Huge JD Legend and King of Lightning, two big One Piece YouTubers. And I was right about a lot. I said Luffy was a mythical Zoan. And everybody was like, nope, that doesn't make any sense. And I said, well, <laughs> why were they impressed by rubber in itself? And I was doing this whole thing that has no big theory. And they said I was stupid. Then I said Usopp was going to uh, get a higher bounty. than most. And everybody was so mad at my theories. I said, Bu Buggy's going to become a Yonko. It was like a mm -hmm. whole thing. They were just saying, like, this is stupid. You're an idiot. And I got my entire channel flagged and taken down. Or for you because you was right? Correct. They were that mad at me. Oh wait! And, holy and, hell! You got you got blessed with the gift of foresight so much <laughs> that they was like, "Nah, bro, that's too much of," a, and they got you. And this is the reason being is I got I got into a a call. It wasn't a Discord call. It was oh my god! It was like I think it was a Skype call or something like that. It was a while mm -hmm. ago, and with a King of Lightning. And I said, "Nigga, what are you talking about?" And he said, "Nigga, what?" And they took that clip. It spread all around Twitter. Spread around Twitter, and they said, "White guy says nigga against King of Lightning." And because I sound with this vernacular over, in, like, if nobody yeah, saw my face, they're just yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I already know where you are. I yeah, it, I was, because I had 100,000 because they thought I was a white guy talking about One Piece. Oh, shit. I was like, whoops. And then yeah, they a, tore me apart. Yeah, when I was doing commentary and I was doing faceless, a lot of people was like, a lot of people didn't even know I was black, even though I made videos prior to my YouTube channel that I was black. But, you know, I had that enunciation going on and I had that. I didn't have the enough hood in my throat, you know. So <laughs> when I people talk we're like, wow, talk really good for a black guy. Wow. It's a very impressive vernacular that you got there. Your, your, your vocabulary is very extensive. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> dealing with that as an anime gaming nerd, black person, you get that all the time, bro. But... Yeah, damn, I didn't even know about that, about the whole YouTube thing. God, are you still banned? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, don't, I used to go by Dog Poison, which was because I was chocolate, Dog Poison, boom. But gotcha. now <laughs> I go by Sarah's the Sarah's, guy. Sarah's the guy. Yeah, because right, that's cool. my literal name. I was like, you know, my name is cool enough to pass, so. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's dope. <laughs> it's iconic. It's, it's, it, it kills me the most because I, I, I think I know the issue. I, I, and and I, I feel like I found the issue. When I when I was stuck to me, yeah. when I was stuck in Japan, uh, there was a Chinese guy there and I walked up to him and I said, How do you are you are you get xenophobia like I do? He said, What do you mean? I said, Do you get xenophobia like everybody calls me Chris Rock here? Uh, they just touched my hair and called me Chris Rock. And it was like, yeah. What? And it was like, Yeah and he was like, Why do you think I would get xenophobia? And I was like, Because you're Chinese, right? And he said, How did you know I was Chinese? And I said, You don't look Japanese. He began to, to cry. He be, I was like, what? He was like, he was like you see me? <laughs> so I was confused. I was like, why are you, you see crying? Me? He was so, he was so I was like, why are you crying? You crying? He was like, because everybody thinks I'm Japanese. I'm like, no, you don't look Japanese. I, I think it's because I had been around a lot of Japanese people and I could just tell the extensive difference. And then yes. he, he spoke in, in common day Mandarin and then he, he taught me a very fun phonetic lesson. He said, I don't even see why people think our languages sound the same because Chinese is, and this is just nonsense. And he said, shi shai kung chai shi. And I'm like, yeah. And Japanese is, sugete okonaete okonashira. And I'm like, Okay, he said one's flowy and one's punchy, and I'm like, oh, oh, that's a great way to remember it. 
<laughs> yeah, I uh I'm sorry. The only thing that I heard in this in what you just said in the past five seconds is you are you do you speak Japanese and Chinese? Is that is that what I'm catching here? <laughs> I, I, I I I speak enough Japanese to get by because I was stuck in Japan, sadly. To get by ass. What are you talking about? You nah, that was some that was some fluent ass shit right there. That was that was that was dubbed. I, I see you. <laughs> that was see dubbed you. as crazy. It's, I, see you. I, I was I when I was when I was doing my hood adventures after I got kicked out of Amish country, I got kicked out of Amish country. Um, because I was sleep, I was I'm sleeping sorry, with pause. the women. Dude, Saros, I gotta stop with you, dog. You keep dropping these like tidbits that you, that sound like an entire ass season of an anime. You're like, yeah, b b back when I, uh, you know, destroyed a planet, and I, you know, and I dropped off of here, and I, 150 year old, and then I got kicked out of the the NFL stadium. Like, <laughs> God damn, have you done like a? I know you're interviewing me, but have you done a? synopsis of your life do you talk about that on on tiktok or, that is like, i have i think i have 867 drafts um just stockpiled of stories and i just upload like three a day and, oh nice uh, you are banked you are <laughs> packed yeah i don't i don't i i literally i literally don't work anymore i just chill at home upload a video see about my business that's how i, I operate because that's, that's life that's how you do it i i think I, I every day I, I when I was younger I tried to make every day memorable. That's all I wanted. I didn't care what I was gonna be tomorrow, but today I was gonna be amazing. That was it. That was my motto. And what happened in that span of time, uh, when I got kicked out of Amish country because I was just sleeping with the women and they kicked me out because I was the, I was the only black person there. After that, they, I, I, they I, said, I, stop I, taking our women's. <laughs> like stop stop using your your B B C. I was like, oh, gee Willikers, guys, I'm so sorry. I apologize. <laughs> You over here crossbreeding with the Amish, bro. <laughs> well, this is gonna sound crazy too. I got a vasectomy, so. <laughs> oh, so you're good, good. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm, I'm great. So I was, I was, I don't want to risk having a Jebediah out there. I don't want to do that. I, uh, I approve. I approve. <laughs> so after that whole shebang, um, I got Craig's. I went to Craigslist and I was trying to find another place to live, and I ended up going to Japan, China. I went to Australia. Got bit by a Tasmanian devil. Didn't know Tasmanian devils were real. That caught me off guard. There was so much I did. <laughs> that was exciting, man. And you're what? You say you're what? Twenty eight? I'm twenty seven. I'm just twenty. I'm a young guy. Yeah, you're a damn ass baby, man. You lived a good ass life, man. And I, I, I'm, hey, I'm proud of you, man. You came from uh, you came from some some humble beginnings, man. And um, just I mean, just want to communicate this too, as an as a as a black creator, it's not easy, right? No. Oh. To to do to get to where you are, uh, from where you came from, with the handicap that you have naturally the passive of being black i'm very the, proud of you man. the it's passive some, debuff exactly the <laughs> passive debuff <laughs> sometimes we can turn it into a buff man but um i'm very proud of you man that's 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 super huge man i think you're gonna you keep doing this man you're gonna you're gonna go super crazy man i just want to say that I just just respect from you know one black creator to another content creator i see you man it's gonna it's gonna be and i appreciate i respect you don't understand how deeply like you don't understand the presence you have in my life you you cannot grasp it, it's not even a parasocial presence either it's not it's not like i'm like oh I, this person's my best friend it is watching you actively recognize even when you go through that eye thing and watch you struggle and suffer that little bit watch you with your cats every instance watching your fan art grow watching people do it on twitter watching you be active watch you upload once a day every day for a year and then breaking that but still joking that you actually did it it was so fun witnessing every stride everything because it was a journey of a black content creator that was growing up slowly very slowly but still not being stopped by the slow growth you have to work twice as hard for half as much so to me you are four Ooh. times better than every other content creator that i've witnessed and it is impressive to see i love that damn holy <laughs> shit dude um god damn man yeah yeah i'll marry you okay you, you risked me i ain't i ain't i ain't never oh my god i am i uh i really appreciate that dude i definitely feel like you see me man you've been watching me for a while you shit yeah kind of hit me in the feels man you, you, you um, i used to go to sleep to your videos <laughs> yo i you have no idea how much that meant to me man because um shit i mean i think you do because you're a content creator and you you create because you're trying to create an impact you know for someone else the same one that someone might have created for you right and uh shit man i i hear all the time when people are like hey man i mean 
you're love you as a YouTuber, right? But I felt like you saw right through me when you were just communicating with those words, man. And um <laughs> Yo, humbly and respectfully, man, I, I appreciate those kind words. I think those are going to stick with me forever. <laughs> you, yeah, and I know, I know it's hard to, because you, you see 380,000, or I believe, I believe you're at 380,000. Yeah. You're, you're, you, right. see, you see that number, and you're thinking to yourself, okay, that's good, but what about a million? You got to factor in, if I had a thousand people in an auditorium, I could take over a small city. Like, that's <laughs> <laughs> you know how I think about it now, man? How so? Um, you know, you ever have that concept? It, well, you probably have too as well, because I feel like you feel me on this shit. But like, I, you you want to have goals and aspirations. Say you want to have a million subscribers, but maybe in the back of your head, you know, down possible. And maybe number one, you don't know how to get there. Number two, there's it's too stacked against you. Number three, like, there's not like a clear path. Sometimes when is when it's us, it's a little tricky. Um, to 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 get around the algorithm combined with like i said the passive that we have so sometimes i want to be like yeah guys this year i i i want a million subscribers but sometimes i don't want to actually put those type of goals out into the world just to know that i might be doing it just to set myself up for disappointment which sucks ass right because i always believe that if you have a dream goal right you should you should communicate that and you should speak into an existence um, and I, I feel like that's the energy you should go for. You should always operate under the pretense that what you want to be is what's going to actually happen. It's inevitable. It's just a matter because that's the kind of energy you need to get to where you want to be a lot of times. But I have started reaching the place in my YouTube career where I'm like, nah, fuck it. I'm going to keep going for it. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. As long as I can keep my current community happy the people that i that i fucks with and if we can get a couple plus ones every now and then that contentness is there i i, I want to aspire to grow to to be bigger better stronger faster harder to talk to more people it, that would be glorious man um but for some reason just for me specifically i can't really see how to create that path and so since i can't see it the only thing i know that i can do on a day-to-day -day basis is wake up and be better right wake up be stronger be better edit better figure out how to, to make better content that's the only thing i can do is focus on that today and hopefully maybe sometime in the future there might be a blow up but if it doesn't happen you know it's kind of like fuck it I'm, I'm 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 happy with where i am i'm happy with where i got i'm happy that i actually have the audience i'm happy that i got to meet you i'm in a place where i'm talking to you right now and i'm blessed right so the goal, the big picture to go to the moon is is always going to be my drive. But while I'm in the place, if I'm at a, in a pit stop or if I'm stuck, you know, I'm not going to feel bad or feel sorry for myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take in the view of where, where I am, and, um, just keep doing what I can do and then just see where that goes. If, if there reaches a point in time where my YouTube career comes to an end and I never reach 1 million subscribers, it is what it fucking is that's my motto by the way <laughs> it is what it fucking um, is it is what it fucking is bro but if i do get past there and sorry i don't know if Chris no 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 bad for this you. is oh, you okay, can cool. i don't care about monetization okay, i'm cool. making up TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it is what it is man and uh, let me just keep doing my best i'm gonna keep enjoying the people that i have around me again blessed that you know i uh you came onto the stream man to say what's up to talk to me do you have any uh do you have any specifics? Do you have any? Do you have any like questions <laughs> this, about me? this? Any, was, like this was this was exactly what I want. What I, I don't I don't seek to. A lot of people when they hear <laughs> interview, they always assume like, oh, there's gonna be specific questioning. I am so I love talking. I love speaking. Yeah, so you like vibing? Yeah. This is this is what I want from people. <laughs> I need to. I, I think this is what love is to me like this yeah. conversation is love because love is the moment where you take down the screens that you put the facade and you let people take a look and a peek at that esoteric eccentric core inside your soul and have that displayed on full audience that is what i crave from interactions that's what i want damn man <laughs> You come from another plane, bro. I'm trying to. This, I, I, you, you really are the main character. Hey, let me, let me, let me, let me throw in some support here, bro. You that are is definitely what, him. That is what you everyone keeps him. saying to me. That is the most. That is the most searched thing on my name on TikTok. Main character Saros. You got. 
it's it's important, man, because it sounds like you have a lot of self love, and then you also you also push that out to people around you, and it's contagious as shit. Like I'm already talking to you right now, and I can tell. Like you got the Riz, you're Mister Rizington, bro, and. <laughs> Not just in just charming because of um, your ability to talk with people, but you have a ability to connect with people. It's 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 instant. I've got I've got a little bit of that as well. So you know, Riz recognize Riz, <laughs> and so yeah, man, it's you're a magical being, dude. And I think that you're going to freaking explode um, continuously. That and is, I think that's not even a, a matter of 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 if it's just a matter of when man but that's kind of see this is this is and i was watching nope yesterday i don't know if you've ever seen the movie nope uh i didn't watch that i didn't watch that most people hate they, it yeah <laughs> oh, if you look if look at reviews people hate it the movie in itself if yeah. you take if you don't compare it to other the jordan peele's others films it is a perfect movie yeah and there's a there's a specific scene in the movie where a filmmaker is being uh, talked to by one of the kiki palmer and yeah. he says that view at the top, that dream that you look for, that you're striving for, it's a dream you never wake up from. And I, I, upon me getting that overnight blow up from like 5,000 to 50,000 overnight, and then going to 100,000 in less than a span of a month, and then now I'm at 224,000 now on TikTok, and it, it, I, just, I gain like 5,000 a day. I gain so many followers a day. And I think about that so deeply because... I am now what I thought I could never be. I am now this 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 monolith, this this zenith, this epoch, and it messes me up so deeply because I'll get hit up by people I used to like worship. I got hit up by somebody I thought I, I would never be able to speak to, and that messed me up for a long time. I, I'm I'm trying to speak to Daquan Wiltshire one of these days. I'm trying to speak My to boy, people. Daqu <laughs> that, that's what I want to do. I, I like people like that. I want to speak to people like that more than anything. Yeah. And I feel like Daquan would I mean easily. You guys would connect right off the get go. <laughs> if I can, if I can find some way to contact, if you got anywhere for me to contact him, go nuts. <laughs> Outside of Twitter, I don't know. That man just be a he's a he's a menace on Twitter. That man just rage baiting. <laughs> I got I got I got a, I got two pa I got two panels accepted at DreamCon. And hopefully, I can catch him. <laughs> nice, nice. He's gonna be. There. I need to go to a DreamCon. I'm way too black tonight. Why have you, why have you not been to DreamCon, actually? Let's talk a, about that. I'm a, I'm a hermit, dog. I don't fuck around too much with cons. I, I, I'm an introvert. It's, it's interesting. I'm a, I, don't, I don't mess with people. I like, I like persons. I like individuals. But when it comes to um, large groups, there's a lot of shit that's happened in my life that's kind of uh, not made me a loner. But once you get got by enough people, to, it, <laughs> I started coming. You know what I mean. You get got by people especially close people you, you you realize that i need to build my foundation first and i need to figure out how to do me with just me first and then my small little circle and then, and then i'll branch out over time so i've been kind of a i don't know how to put it i'm an extrovert on paper you put me in a group of people i worked corporate right i will i will fucking you know energy out the ass everyone's having a good time i'll make sure that happens but I think, like, inwardly, um, the, my favorite experiences in life is when I'm talking, you know, one-on-one -on -one or people like you, and I'm making much more stronger bonds and connections. Kind of similar to what's happening with Persona 3 right here, those social links. <laughs> the social link, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I like, to keep my, I like to keep my circle small, and I take pride in it, too, as well. So that's why I haven't done DreamCon, because I haven't felt like expanding myself out yet. I think it's going to change over time. Um, I'm just doing it slowly. Right now, I'm still kind of like a turtle. I peek my head out. You know, like Corey's kind of similar too. Like Corey, he should be he, everywhere all the time. Yeah. He did hit up DreamCon. He did. He did go to DreamCon last year, and this he is did. this is the craziest thing. Corey lives in Warren, Michigan. <laughs> this brother is so close to. I, he. This is gonna sound psychotic, and this is this is insane. No one ever believes me about this. I didn't know who Corey Kenshin was. <laughs> here, here. That's fair. That's, he, that's, that is actually fair. He's not, he's not, people don't market him like, like how they would market, you know, yeah. Matt Pat, you know what I'm saying? Like as, as big as Corey is, I don't feel like he gets marketed. Like if he was Markiplier yeah. or Matt Pat or, or, you know, your yeah. boy, uh, uh, Jack. So he had a, he had it a makes sense. You don't know. He had a Bruce Lee collaboration. Yeah. Right. I remember that. Yeah. And 
I, I like two days after that because he was, he was back in Michigan, and I, I was I was at Walmart, and I bump into him. I bump into Corey, oh shit, right? I didn't <laughs> yeah. know who he was though. So and and at this point, I'm I'm still I'm still a bit of bit of a nigga. I'm not gonna lie to anybody. Still a bit of a that's nigga. totally fine. Yeah, it's always gonna be our blood, obviously. Do so that. I I see his cart and I'm like, that's exactly what I'm looking for, man. So I grab his cart. He's like, bro, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, the cart. <laughs> I'm going to take the cart. He said, I, I will buy you groceries if you just stop bothering me. And I was like, okay, let's go. So he buys my groceries. <laughs> we go that around. Like something Corey's. Hey, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we, 23 minutes, we're going around Walmart. He's buying all my groceries, all of them. And I'm like, cool, thanks. He said, hey, don't do that. And I'm like, hey, I'm a Detroit nigga. I'm going to do what I feel like for real. And he daps right. me up and says, "All right, man, cool." And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah." <laughs> and he's and he and I. And then I said, "You look like you watch Naruto." He's like, "I do watch Naruto." Then we had a five minute conversation about Sasuke, and I left. <laughs> he said, uh, "You said I had a conversation about Sasuke." Yeah, about Sa five five minute conversation yeah. about Sasuke. Then I left. Then yeah. uh, six months later, I'm in, I'm I'm talking to somebody called the Greg, uh, and he's like yeah. a everybody calls him like a Corey Kenshin clone, but he's not. He makes different content, and I'm like, yeah, yeah I, met, I, I was like, I met Corey, and I was like, what? Yeah, I met Corey, and they're yeah, like, Corey. no, you didn't. I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Corey is um Corey too. I, well, I started, I I got late on Corey as well, but when I caught his content, I uh, I, I think we are we we've got common souls because you know I've, uh, nick I don't know about this. <laughs> go ahead good energy people right i i i harp on energy a lot um that's kind of like my thing where um i don't look at people too often but i can feel energy when i'm talking to someone i can feel good energy and i can feel bad energy when i interact with certain people and i'm usually never wrong on that shit you can see how people operate in tandem, in private, public, around people, how they treat servers, how they treat strangers, how they, what if they blow up and they get big and how they change. There's all creators now that in this, this Twitch streaming space, just full of shit, you know, <laughs> not, not knowing that they're in a place that are blessed and they treat their, their audience or the people around like they're gods and stuff. And so watching Corey and seeing his content, I feel like I can feel a bit of his soul being poured into his content. Yeah, this, this nigga is just good ass energy. So you having a good interaction with Corey, uh, and this guy is also, you know, humble as well. I can already tell that their interaction was dope. But it was, it was fun, and I, I and on the ego space, I've spoken to Amareth before, and I hated every oh. minute of it. I hate. Oh that. no, Amareth's not cool. People, I thought she might be chill. I thought she might be one of those people like on public, she might seem insufferable. But when you talk to her, like you know how like some people look like they insufferable. In yeah. person, when you see it, and then you meet him, you're like, oh, chill as f I thought she might be that. She's not that? No, 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 no. Because uh, there's this cute bot. Cute bot is great. Mm -hmm. I, Kiana, she's cool. She's a big reason why I even wanted to get back into streaming. She's great. I love every interaction I've had with Kiana, even if it's joking, has been great. Yeah. Amaranth, her personality is the, the the facade she puts on is now just her it is insane to witness oh no it no, is she got somebody she she got a guy maybe she you maybe you're not close enough in her circle for her to, I, to, to drop it i, I got i gotta factor this in here i was <laughs> oh I, w I was speaking to like uh because i i used to speak to people like i don't know if you know neon snyder panda and john zerka i used to talk to them zerka, yeah, yeah, yeah they, they yeah. suck as they suck as people right yeah. And Amarath was welcomed into that space and I got flown out to LA by Emma Magnolia. I got flown out. Um and there's a YouTube video of me hanging out with Emma Magnolia and Violet Myers. It's like a whole YouTube video about that. Oh my girl Violet, okay. She's she's cool. Violet's cool. Emma's cool. I, I already know Violet's cool. Yeah, I can tell <laughs> instantly. That was instantly. Two people I genuinely don't like, and I need to interview this person. And I don't, I don't care if he ever watches this. I need to interview Heavenly Controller because I don't like him. I need to interview him. Okay, he, he's been, I I he's been on some shit. I don't, yeah, like I don't know him. if you've been watching him. Yes, I, I have. I don't else. like him. And that's and, fair. You can say it. Yeah, I don't like him at all. And Amaranth again. Amaranth sucks. I I talked to her in person. No cameras. No facade. I spoke to her. She sucks. I like how you're like, I got two people that I just do not like. I'm I want to interview them. <laughs> I need to. I need to get them. I, I want to speak to people Thank that hate. Thank God you liked me, dog. That would have been, been, I'm glad I'm not on that list. Because 
<laughs> nah, I you know I, I um heavily controller is um I don't know. I'm gonna say this nigga's lost because I don't like to. I don't want to bad mouth people. Like the, 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 you, a, you don't. You don't, don't have to bad mouth them in any capacity. I'll do it for you. This motherfucker. <laughs> This nigga, he's, 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 he's stepping over boundaries. He's he really chill. is. He's he been in new YouTube, and I've been I've been watching his stuff, seeing if he's gonna like do anything different. But he still is the same being. I thought he's he going through change. something. He's, I think he's going through some shit. All I see is him with like models and stuff like that. And I I think maybe his old YouTube bag may he just be living off that money. I'm not quite sure. But I'm really confused and concerned about him as a person he seems I'm concerned about him as well i think that's the word i'm concerned i think he's going something internally um i don't know if it's social media shit i don't know i thought maybe he might just have rich parents or something but when i see his interactions online with the women in his space he's he's, he's lost in some type of sauce and i just hope that he can find it, something solid my man is he's, you, um, you remember what he was like right you were there in the beginning you were there, I was there in the beginning of the days he um, was a nerdy black dude he was, I mean, he probably got his heart broke too many times. That's usually what happens. Most, 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 most men, right? It takes just two, one or two heartbreaks, <laughs> two right? Heartbreaks. And then we go straight into Andrew Tate, red pill, everything sucks, fuck women kind of thing, right? <laughs> every, that's every fucking guy's, uh, what's that giant call from the Spider-Verse? The, they were, they were, the uh, canon event, canon event. <laughs> yes, the canon event, man. And this man might have had too many canon events, I feel like. And he, I don't know if he's got, um positive male role models in his life to, to to steer him back in the right direction but i pray for him man and um i i don't like to see him encroaching on women as bad as he is privacy in the way that he does yeah I, I, i'm not gonna i don't i don't know him <laughs> talking to him like that because i don't know him like that i do want better for him it, i want better for everybody i never and, and this is gonna sound crazy and specifically horrifying I never in my life want to dislike a black person. I really don't. I, I, I dislike will, a lot of black people. But I, I know. I, I know. <laughs> I, 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 like, like there, I, I made a whole video about black people I have beef with. I was like, I don't like Tyler Perry. I don't like. It was like so mm -hmm. many. I was, I was like, mm -hmm. I don't like Oprah. I don't, I don't like. A lot of people don't like them. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's just that's universal shit now. Yeah, I, was, I don't like these black Republicans. I was, I was like, I, just, I don't like Will Smith. I was like, why don't you like Will Smith? I was like, because I read his book. I don't like him. <laughs> Look, and to be honest, you can. Please continue to not like the people that you don't like. It's, it's also important, man. Cause I think some people don't put their foot down or create boundaries in that space to say, no, I don't want to fuck with you. Some people put up that fake facade. And like, it's refreshing hearing people saying, like, no, I have a very distinct stance on somebody and I, I will communicate that versus the, you know, the real people you got to be worried about are the people who like everybody or the people who don't express that because I feel like that's a little unrealistic. Um, and I feel like it might be a little bit, a uh, little bit of lying. It's 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 a bit scary. And th there's one person who I feel, and this is not a black content creator, but I feel like is a perfect allegory for how black content creators can probably grow in a crazy big space. Were you around when everybody thought Moist Critical was black? You mean in his commentary days? B before commentary. <laughs> no, I mean commentary like when he was doing faceless commentary. Yes, yeah. When he was, people just, thought he was black. Everyone th up until the Snapchat video of him shooting it into the cup got released. Everyone thought he was black. Wow, he had the opposite of me, bro. Everybody thought I was white. That's crazy. <laughs> I love me some Charlie, man. Are are you cool with Charlie? I love. I am cool with the people in his circle so deeply. Just Joel's, who is Caleb. Yeah. We, I'm cool with him deeply. He's cool. I love God. him. I love just Joel's. I've never interacted with Charlie yet. I love his content. Yeah. Because he doesn't do any editing. There's, it's the worst editing I've ever seen in my life. It is Windows Movie Maker level editing. It's just him as a person. And they love it. I mean, I think that's what... I, I think that's what a lot of people... It's kind of like a Lamai Energy too as well. I, I think with people doing so much on YouTube, so much editing, so much uh, trying to Mr. Beast and up that shit up and everything, <laughs> it, it's a fresh breath of air when... Niggas are just in front of a camera, cut it on, and just start talking and then leave, right? Because <laughs> I feel like a little bit that helps you synthesize from all of the extra sensory, you know, stuff that's happening nonstop, especially when you scroll in on shorts. And then all... I don't know, man. People like authentic, and I think people are smarter. I don't think that people, audience, I don't think content creators give audiences the respect that they deserve. Like they're, they're smart. 
This and they, they, they know what they like, and they don't need smokes and mirrors in order to, to hit the subscribe button. They can, they can see it. I think, I think you have my wife's issue, and, I, and, it's, gonna, it's, and it's the reason why I grew so fast, and it's probably the reason why I'm going to keep growing fast, because we have the exact opposite viewpoint on this. <laughs> oh, what? Hey, look, you've been growing. So, I mean, like I said, payment, bro, get, get, get me hooked on TikTok, bro. I'm going to listen to you. On, on, I tic, already, on TikTok? I can already tell that, yeah. On TikTok specifically... My my wife, we'll we'll do like a sit down video where we'll talk about how we forgive people and how we don't we don't talk to people to judge them. We talk to people to understand. Like I could talk to. It's gonna sound chaotic and crazy. Just hear me out. I want an interview with EDP four four five. The reason being is because I need to talk to him. I need to talk to this psychopath, this absolute degenerative human being, because I need to understand the machinations of what drives this creature to exist. I need that. I need okay. to understand him. He's a horrible you person. Feel that curiosity, yeah. it, 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 it kills me so deeply to understand how he did it, why he does it, and if it's in mental debilitation. I want to understand people too deeply to put morals in the way. I need to. Hell, I want to talk to R. Kelly. So I'm like, you know what, Kelly, what's wrong with your brother? Come on. <laughs> I, 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 that's why when I hold this point, this Tucker Carlson, mm -hmm. he's got to finish this interview with Vladimir. No, I don't want to see it. I want to Vladimir, Russia, and I want to hear your brain. Yeah, I think I want the inner workings of people of who are not good people to see them talk and explain themselves. Sometimes it doesn't mean that I'm going to empathize and empathize, but to understand why people do the things that they do, why I think that the answer is probably much more simpler than you, you might expect. And I think the answer is is that some people are just pieces of shit. That's yes. just literally the answer. And I think that's why my starts waning after a while, after discovery, is that some people are just shit. <laughs> and, that, that's, that, that's, and that's just how life is. And that sucks, right? That sucks. But here goes the, the beauty behind that statement in itself. Some people suck. However, let's take my twin brother, for example. His name is Calcifer. Calcifer, he, he, his, he has a wife. And three girlfriends. And his wife knows about the girlfriends. He owns a worm farm in Upper Arlington, oh, uh, Columbus. Like, Upper Arlington in Columbus, Ohio. He sells drugs. The police knows he sells drugs. He does not go to jail for this. He sells to the police. This is horrifying to know. All this information sucks. Nobody cares. Yes. But he is an amazing boyfriend. No, nay, he's an amazing husband, too. He will give to anybody. He will if you ask him for a thousand dollars right now, he'd be like, "Sure, here you go." No, no strings attached. He is generous without any anything uh, strings attached. He is amazing okay, in that aspect. Remind me to hit him up early. I got you. But he is he is generally speaking an amazing person outside of a few things he's done, right? And when you when you factor in the whole of humanity and the whole bulk of a person you can't just take one good thing they do but when you're online and you put on this facade i donate to charity i do this i xyz i do that then people judge you based on only that that's why so many people do charity streams probably they probably don't even care about the charities most of the time it's but a tax write-off it's a tax write-off but people look at that and say my, they, somebody would donate $10,000. My mother struggled with Alzheimer's. And the stream would be like, thanks. Anyways, I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's insane. It is insane. It is. And uh, trying to, it's the scary part about the too, is mixing in people's personalities that you see online with who they are as a person, which kind of helps me a little bit because kind of what you see is what you get. I'm, 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 I'm the same thing. Stop too hard to, to, to try to, to switch and it's okay if people want to hide their true selves or their personalities for me it's gotten I'm a little bit older now um and i've stopped giving as much as a fuck about the you know weaknesses that are in my game so i feel like but there are still some people who don't want to share all of that and that's completely fine too i'm not gonna put myself up there yeah understanding people like edp45 and these 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 people who just do bad things, but maybe they're different people, or maybe some of it's a persona, maybe some of it's a facade, some of it's a character act. I don't know. All I know, again, my boy, when it comes to this, is, is energy, right? Mm -hmm. And I can tell that my nigga ED people for five, that's some bad energy. <laughs> Horrible and energy. I'm Horrible. I'm telling you, it's, it's bad energy, man. <laughs> and when you, when you put yourself in the, in the group, in a room with somebody with bad energy, 
unless you're trying to exercise that shit or whatever, it's um. It's not I don't always work. find it worth it. It's not saying that you shouldn't interact with these people, and I think that you should satisfy your curiosity. I don't know. Goal is to just understand, which is good. I think you're better than me in that. I've <laughs> reached a point where I don't seek to understand anymore. Um, I just accept. I just say, all right, some, some people are just going to be certain people. Why? I don't know. I don't even give a fuck at this point because it's not going to change the outcome. It's not going to change the outcome. And I only would prefer to, to, to keep my energy directed to people like you uh, versus <laughs> kind of wasting it towards people like Edie Poof. But I respect your pursuit of knowledge and your pursuit of understanding and creating conversations. Because like you said, that's what you feed off. Feed off these interactions and you need it and you desire it. And if that is the case, then you need to keep going, my God. <laughs> do, yeah. you know how to do you know how to contact Heavenly Controller, by the way? Uh, Heavenly? I'm pretty sure if I jump in one of his Twitch streams and just talk to him, he'll have to acknowledge me because he's got like 10 people in there. That would be so I mean, simple. It wouldn't be that want, hard. I can just send him a message on I would love, you know what? I would love that. <laughs> if, if, I so, could, if I could speak to, I would love that. I would love an interview right. with that. That'd Let's be do great. this, by the way. I just ordered some pizza. And it <laughs> I'm thinking two things. Okay. One, mind me about the HC, the Heavenly Controller. Mm -hmm. And then number two, we should do a part two. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm free all the time. <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. Yo, it has been a fucking blessing talking to you. I, I, uh, Man, it's, you feel like a kindred spirit, man. Thank you for even just reaching out and responding to the message. I appreciate you. Are you I'm, kidding I'm, me, man? Uh, you know me, dog. If you've been watching yeah, me, then you yeah. know you ain't have to. <laughs> you you need to do that. I'm just I just need I just wanna I gotta be alluring somehow. I gotta make sure I, I'm not just some like extra. I just gotta make sure that I like you know hey, get man. people's attention. You know what I mean? You could have been an extra too. You didn't have to. Well, just me. But I get it. You you gotta come strong. Yeah. To get somebody's attention sometimes. So and I respect it. And this is also for chat for those of you guys who are, who are watching, shoot your shot. It's not that hard. So it's just you know he called me at the right time, good time. It had nothing to do with. <laughs> and then I found out, and so um yeah, man, you're going to do absolutely fucking amaze me amazing you're uh the compensation for this is you gotta put me on that tiktok game I and will, tell me about that omni ai shit i will i will, oh. I will get the I'll, <laughs> I'll find the page again because i was listening to it all that it's crazy i'll find the page again i'll show you i'll find it for you that's what's up man and then uh i'll let you know when i'm free again we can do a part two and since you've had me on discord that's kind of where i reside so feel free to hit me up about don't be bothering me or nothing like that I, I look forward to getting to know you a little bit no problem, brother. You have a lovely and blessed day. You too, my guy. Take it easy. Thanks again for sending that invite to talk with me. I'm glad I had to talk with you.